Now that we have purchased our first virtual private server from Trash.net, my number one choice for high performance unmetered VPS, and can see that it is running without any issues, and I've also understood some basic Linux operating system principles. It's time to access our VPS and begin the actual process of configuring the VPN server. Like I mentioned before, soft either VPN server can be installed on most major operating systems, but we're using the Ubuntu operating system for this demonstration, as that is my preference, and we'll be connecting to it from a Windows machine. Of course, the basic principles remain the same, regardless of the operating system you choose. To be able to access our VPS, which we purchased earlier using a Windows machine, since that is accessible to most people, like I have here, we will require an SSH client, a secure shell client. It's a program that allows establishing secure and authenticated SSH connections to SSH servers. My number one choice for this is a tool called Putty. And you can easily grab that by opening our web browser and heading out to putty.org. Of course, you are at liberty to use any SSH clients that you consider more intuitive. I'll use the first download here button. It takes me to another page. I'll select the first one here on the list, Windows installer for 64-bit x86, which is okay for most users. If you're on a different system architecture, like say a 32-bit operating system, you may have to use other versions. Now, the download is completed. I'll double click to run, confirm that, next, and finish up the installation. Now I'll launch the Putty client. Remember, in an earlier video, we had received an email containing our server access details. Of primary importance is the server IP and root password, which is what we will need to access our server. So we'll go back to that email, copy our server IP, come back to Putty, and put it in there in the field that says hostname or IP address. Leave the port at 22, which as I pointed out in an earlier video, is the well-known port for SSH. Click open. Being our first connection to this machine, we'll get a security warning regarding the SSH keys. We'll go ahead and click accept, then log in as root, hit enter, then our root password, which we said earlier and which was also provided to us via email. Now, you may choose to manually type this if you remember it, I guess you should, or highlight and copy it from the email and then right click here inside the putty terminal. By the way, right clicking inside of putty, paste the last item you copied which is on your clipboard into the terminal. Note also that whether you're pasting or typing manually, the password will not display anything on the terminal. Continue all the same and hit enter when you're done. Now we're in. The first step for me usually is to change my current root password as I do not typically trust the password that has been transmitted via email. To do that, I'll issue the password command. That's pass, wd, hit enter. I'll be prompted for a new password. I'll enter that. Hit enter yet again. And again, I'm asked to confirm it. So I'll re-enter and then hit enter. You can now see the password has been updated successfully. Now we're good to go. For your convenience, I have included all the necessary commands required to build our VPN server in a text file as a resource next to this video. So you can grab that right away and follow along, as I'll basically be pasting these commands from there, as some are quite long and not worth the typing trouble on this video. Usually my first step would be to update the Linux OS. As technology progresses, developers discover patches and updates to the Linux kernel. These patches can improve security, add functionality, or even improve the speed at which the operating system functions. I'll go ahead and say app get update, ampersand, app get upgrade. Of course, I'm not proceeding this with sudo because I am already logged in as a root user and have full permission. If that is not the case with you or your VPS instance, you will need to prefix your command with the super user do or the sudo command. So I'll hit enter. It will put a list of available updates, showing me the required storage space that will be taken by this update. And I'll type Y to say yes to that. Hit enter and give that a while to complete. This will usually take a while depending on the speed of your VPS internet connection and how many programs are due for upgrade. I'll break out of this video and I'll allow it to finish, then I'll return. Now it's completed. The SoftEther VPN software is available at softether-downloads.com and if we head out to that on our regular browser, say softether-downloads.com, you'll see that we have the option to download the SoftEther VPN client, bridge, VPN server and more. 
Unfortunately, our Linux terminal does not allow us to go out to web pages in the regular GUI browsers like we use on Windows. So we will need a tool called Lynx. Lynx is a terminal based web browser for all Linux distributions. It shows the result as plain text on the terminal. It is a classic non-graphical text mode web browser which displays the pages on the terminal. Lynx does not load images and multimedia contents. Hence, it is faster as compared to other browsers. Usually, this gets installed automatically after we perform an upgrade, like we did earlier. But in the event that it is not, you can just say apt, install, links, hit enter. There's no harm in doing this. If it is not installed, this command will go ahead and get it installed. If you already have it, it will simply tell you so. Like in my case, you can see it says links is already the newest version. With links now present, we'll go out to the soft ether dash downloads page from the terminal here. So we say links space http www.softether downloadcom forward slash files forward slash soft ether and hit enter. We scroll down to the latest RTM version. Notice that you might see beta and RTM. Beta is a widespread release expected to be mostly stable, feature complete, but still undergoing improvement and might not exactly be stable. RTM or release to manufacturing is the final release of the product, the gold release so to speak. So I recommend you always settle for the latest RTM release even if you have a newer beta version available. So we hit enter on that. Next, we're asked to choose our operating system. In our case, it's Linux. We scroll to that and hit enter. Then again, we are presented with a choice of bridge, client, or server. We are interested in server, so we scroll to that and hit enter. Then our architecture, I'll settle for the last, which is 64-bit, Intel x64 or AMD64. By the way, you can always check this out by using the lscpu command. Let me just do that quickly, so you see, say lscpu. Of course, you see that I have my architecture as x8664. So we go back to our links, soft eater dash download, slash files, slash soft eater, latest RTM, Linux, VPN server, 64 bit, hit enter, and then scroll down to the file and hit the D button to download. Waiting for that to finish, then we hit enter again on save to disk, confirm the file name, no need changing anything, and then hit enter. Then Q to exit, confirm with your Y, and we're back to the root directory. To confirm the presence of the file we had just downloaded, let us use the list command. So we say ls enter. Of course, we do see the compressed soft eater server installation file. Next, we'll go ahead and extract it so it can be usable. So we say tar or tr xzvf, then the file name. A good way to make sure we copy the exact file name is to select it and right click. Now you see, we have it pasted on the terminal. Then we can hit enter. The files are now extracted. After extracting it, a directory named VPN server will be created in the working directory. To confirm this, we'll again use the list command and hit enter. And in fact, we do see the VPN server folder. In order to compile soft eater, there are certain essential tools and packages that must be installed on your server, like make, GCC bin utils, libc, zlib, open SSL, redline, end crosses, and many others. Well, we will not go installing these packages one after the other. We may end up omitting some. So we will use a single command to make this happen. So we will say apt-get install build-essential-y. The dash y is to automatically accept with a yes all installation prompts for the entire packages that make up the build essentials. If we don't add this, we'll have to manually accept each one during the installation. We'll give that some time. It will take a bit. Okay, now it's done. Now that we have all the necessary packages installed, we can compile soft data using the following command. First, we say cd vpn server to get us into the extracted vpn server directory. And now we run make. Enter. So as to compile soft data into an executable file, we'll let that run. Now it's completed. List the directory again, ls, enter. Soft data is now compiled and made into executable files. You can see VPN server and VPN CMD. If for any reason this process fails for you, check if you have all of the required packages installed. Now that soft data is compiled, we can move the VPN server directory to some other place. Here in this case, we'll move it to user, 
slash local. So we say cd to return to our previous directory. Then move VPN server slash user slash local. We change directory user local VPN server. We list again to make sure we're another. And yes, we are. We can see our files. Then we'll change their permissions to protect them. We change mod 600. Change mod 700 VPN server. Change mod 700 VPN CMD. Now, if you would like SoftEater to start as a service upon booting your machine, which I would recommend, you need to create a file named VPN server in the slash etsy slash init.d directory and change the content to what I have provided also in this text file. So to create the file, you say nano slash etsy slash init.d slash VPN server. Now, if for some reason you get an error with this command, you can simply say apt get install nano and hit enter. Or you can as well use any other text editor that you prefer. But nano is of course my favorite. Nano is now installed. We create the file nano slash etsy slash init.d slash vpn server. Paste the sample initialization scripts that I've provided. Now with that initialization file created, you copy the script and paste in here. When that is done, you can hit control plus X to exit. Y to confirm the save action and then hit enter to confirm and exit. One last thing, we're going to make another bash script that ensures the VPN service is started each time your VPS boots up. We need to edit the rc.local script. The script found in slash etsy slash rc.local is for use by the system administrator. It is traditionally executed after all the normal system services are started at the end of the process of switching to a multi-user run level. So again, we say nano slash etsy slash rc.local. In my case, it has content, but not exactly valid for our purpose. So I'll clear this out, make my declarations, shebang slash bin slash sh. I can put a comment. Let's say run VPN server on startup. Then on my first line, I will say change mode 755 slash etsy slash init.d slash VPN server ampersand slash etsy init.d slash vpn and start control x again to exit confirm with a yes and hit enter now for this script to be able to run unattended it needs execute permission granted so we say change mode plus x to add the execute permission then specify the file slash etsy slash rc.local that we just created and that's about it. A VPN server should run just fine by itself the next time this server boots. We'll go ahead and try that. Let's issue the reboot command. That is done. And of course, our terminal freezes. Now, if everything checks out well with our configuration in this video, then our server should have rebooted and started the VPN service. And of course, ready to accept our first admin connection not VPN clients just yet. In the next video, we will attempt to connect to this VPN server from a Windows machine and configure it on a GUI to accept connections from clients as well as create our first VPN client user account.